Now it's very important that the brain, and indeed the spinal cord, is protected from damage. Because when we jump up and down, we don't want the brain to be bashing on the inside of the skull. That will be enough to cause concussion. So it's very important that the brain is protected from damage. Let's think about how that happens. Well, here we have the bone of the skull, which is obviously strong and protective. It's not actually that thick, but it's very well designed to resist impacts. So that's the bone of the skull. And on the outside of that, of course, you've got the subcutaneous tissues and the skin itself. And if you're fortunate, you'll have some hair as well. And all of these things are aiding in the protection of the skull. So the subcutaneous tissues are actually reasonably thick and will provide a fair degree of protection. And then we have the bone of the skull. So this will be the skin and subcutaneous tissues also protecting the precious, irreplaceable, underlying brain. Now immediately under the bone of the skull there's a thick layer of fibrous tissue. And this is immediately under the skull. I've drawn it a little thicker than it is to scale but nice thick layer of fibrous tissue. And this is called the dura mater. The dura mater. Mater is Latin for mother. This layer and these layers we're going to be considering are the mother of the brain, if that makes any sense. It doesn't really, they're old fashioned terms, but anyway. So that's the dura mater. Now further down, of course, we'll have the uh, brain itself. And the brain rises in gyri and sinks in sulci. Rises in gyri and sinks in sulci. And this is very important because the, br the surface of the brain is undulating. It rises in gyri, goes into valleys, the sulci. And that increases the surface area of the cerebral cortex. So the cerebral cortex is the outer layer of the cerebrum. So this is the cere imagine this is the cerebrum of the brain here. And then the cerebral cortex is this outer layer. It's actually relatively thin, but it's packed with nerve cell bodies. So untold millions of nerve cell bodies interconnecting nerve fibers in the cerebral cortex. Very delicate tissue. Brains are not at all tough. You can squidge your fingers through them. They need to be protected, but they're incredibly intricate. The brain, of course, contains 100,000 million nerve cells, each with 1,000 to 10,000 synaptic interconnections. Delicate, complicated structure needs to be protected. So round about the top, lining the surface of the cerebral cortex, and going down the sulci and up the gyri, there's a thin layer lining the surface. But it's still important. That thin layer on the surface is the pia mater. So the pia mater is the thin layer immediately lining the surface of the brain. So, so far we've got the hair, skin, subcutaneous tissues, bones of the skull, dura mater, and the pia mater lining the surface of the cerebral cortex. Now immediately under the dura mater here, there's another layer. 
And this layer is a bit strange because it's like a three-dimensional layer and it has finger-like projections that go down from the main part of this layer down onto the surface of the piumator. And this layer is called the arachnoid mater. Now arachnoid means to do with spiders. So when people first looked at this arachnoid layer, it looked a bit like a spider's web because it's got all these intricate little bits projecting down from the arachnoid onto the pier. It's a three-dimensional layer. And we notice that there's a space between the arachnoid mater and the pier mater. There's a physical space here. And this space is the space under the arachnoid mater. So logically, it's called the subarachnoid space. And in life, the subarachnoid space is filled with the cerebrospinal fluid, CSF, the cerebrospinal fluid. So this layer here is all filled with fluid. But it's not a layer, it's the space underneath the arachnoid motor. The subarachnoid space. But it's also kind of around the arachnoid motor because the arachnoid motor includes these finger-like projections, thread-like projections, really. And of course, the cerebrospinal fluid is completely surrounding the brain, and indeed the spinal cord, because this structure carries on down the vertebral canal. So when you jump up and down, your brain is actually floating in cerebrospinal fluid. And that means it doesn't get bashed, it's suspended in this amazing kind of 360 degree shock absorbing layer, the cerebrospinal fluid. Now collectively the dura mater, the arachnoid mater and the pia mater are described as the meninges, the meningeal layers, the meninges. And of course if they become infected that's meningitis, which is very serious. So the meningeal layers, sometimes they're said to pad the brain. The men meninges or meningeal layers pad. They pad the brain to stop it getting damaged. Pia, arachnoid, dura. They pad the brain. Pia mater, arachnoid mater, dura mater. But the main component is the cerebrospinal fluid. Brilliant shock absorber contained in the subarachnoid space. You've probably got about 150 mils of cerebrospinal fluid now. It's cerebrospinal because it goes around the cerebrum, but then it goes down the spinal cord as well. So it's cerebrospinal fluid. So if we want to take a sample of this cerebrospinal fluid, it can be tapped off from the uh, area of the lumbar vertebrae because the fluid extends down the vertebral column as well, but it's cerebrospinal. So the protection of the brain from external damage via the meninges and the cerebrospinal fluid. <laughs>